Hello everyone, Darren from JTEC Australia and New Zealand. Introducing the Vega 2927L 5G series. There are two router models in this series, the Vega 2927L 5G on the left, which is the base model, and the Vega 2927LAX 5G on the right. Functionally, they are identical to the Vega 2927 router series, with the main difference being the integrated 4G 5G modem. The wireless model, 2927LAX 5G, is Wi-Fi 6 enabled for wireless LAN devices. Some of the key features of the Vega 2927L 5G series routers are that they are 5G LTE routers with dual nano SIM slots, and they have two gigabit Ethernet WAN ports, making them gigabit multi-WAN routers. The AX wireless model is Wi-Fi 6 enabled with AX3000 performance. They are also VPN routers suitable for small to medium sized businesses, offering up to 50 VPN tunnels. And they can also be centrally managed by Vega ACS3 to utilise the SD-WAN capability. The front panel looks similar to the other Vega 2927 series routers, where we have one fixed gigabit Ethernet WAN port and a switchable LAN or WAN port. There are also 5 gigabit LAN ports and a USB port that can be used for a second LTE connection via an attached USB 4G modem. It can also attach a USB flash drive or a USB temperature probe. The router is fitted with an unlocked 4G 5G modem and the combination of the 4G and 5G capability means that this router provides excellent mobile coverage in Australia and New Zealand. Listed here are the 5G bands that are supported which will cover most areas in Australia and New Zealand. Here we have a view of the rear of the Vega 2927LAX 5G router. Similarly to the 2865LAX 5G, the router has a dual SIM card slot which can take two nano SIM cards placed on the carrier before inserting them into the SIM slot. The dual SIM slot allows you to use two mobile network providers so that in the event that one mobile network fails, the router can switch to the secondary SIM card and its cellular network connection. It's also backward compatible with 4G LTE if a 5G network is unavailable. It also has four LTE antennas compared to only two for the older 4G LTE routers. The SIM card slot is on the right. Installing the SIM card is exactly the same as the 2865L 5G router. We first need to remove the cover on the router's rear to install the SIM card. Now remove the SIM card holder by first pushing the SIM card holder in and it will pop out. Now notice that it has two sides so we can install two nano SIM cards. Let's install a Telstra card into the SIM1 side and an Optus one into the SIM2 side. If you're only installing one SIM card, install it into the SIM1 side which will end up on top. Now carefully insert the carrier back into the SIM slot in the router and refit the SIM card cover. Attaching the antennas is also the same as the 2865L 5G router. As with that router, while the connectors on the antennas would allow them to be directly connected to the router, the antenna sockets are too close together, so you'll need to install them with the one meter leads or they won't all fit. But that also means the antennas can be positioned higher where they can get better signal. Note the wireless LAN antennas go on the outside connectors and don't have leads with separate bases. These are easy to tell apart because they're round instead of flat. Plus the connectors on the router are male with a spiky bit in the middle, whereas the four LTE antenna sockets in the centre of the rear of the router are female without that spiky bit. A quick look at the antennas should make it obvious which go on where. There are four LTE antennas in the box and you'll need to fit them on each of the magnetic bases.
Now screw each of the leads into each socket on the router. These will be the four inner sockets. The two outside sockets on the wireless router are for the Wi-Fi antennas. For the best signal, you'll usually want to get the antennas up as high as possible. And remember they are magnetic, so they'll stick to a comms cabinet or rack or anything else metal. There is a rack mount bracket available for these as well, if you do want to install these routers into a rack. If you have limited space and want to tidy up the spaghetti afterwards, you can wind up the excess cables and use the twist ties to make it neater once you have the antennas in the best position. For an outdoor antenna installation, you must have at least two antennas connected. The sockets to use are the left socket on each pair nearest to the power switch. That's the left hand one on the first pair and the left hand one on the second pair. OK, once you've installed the SIM cards and attached the antennas, you're ready to start configuring the 5G connection. After logging into the router, go to the WAN General Setup menu and check that the 5G NR WAN is enabled. Next, go to the WAN Internet Access menu and select 3G, 4G, 5G modem DHCP mode. Then click on the Details tab. On the next menu that comes up, select Enable. Since we've installed two SIM cards, Telstra and Optus will configure SIM 1 and SIM 2. For SIM 1, make sure it's enabled, then disable Auto APN. Depending on your internet plan, you may need to use a different APN, but I'll use the most common APNs here in this demo. Incidentally, APN stands for Access Point Name. For the Telstra SIM card, we'll use Telstra.Internet as the APN, we can keep the rest of the details at default values. For SIM2, enter connect for the APN since this will be connecting to the Optus network. You'll notice on this menu page we have the preferred LTE band where you can select a preferred band if you're in a location where you get better connectivity with a particular band. The network scan lets you search for available networks. The other option here is to query neighbour cells. Since we have both SIM 1 and SIM 2 enabled, you should note that SIM 1 will be the primary SIM and SIM 2 will be the backup when the SIM 1 connection goes down. Finally, click on OK to save the configuration. Now wait a couple of minutes for the 5G connection to come up. You can check the status of the connection by looking at the 5G NR status menu down here. Once the connection is up, you can see the connection details. It'll show the WAN IP address as well as the signal strength. You should now be able to connect to the internet over 5G. The 5G performance of the Vigor 2927L 5G is similar to the Vigor 2865L 5G. The figures shown in the table are expected real world speeds under ideal conditions. However, actual speeds will vary due to network congestion and signal strength. The integrated 5G LTE modem is a Category 19 device and with carrier aggregation can achieve high-speed mobile broadband connectivity for internet access and VPN. In wireless communication, carrier aggregation is a technique used to increase the data rate per user, whereby multiple frequency blocks are assigned to the same user. The maximum possible data rate per user is increased the more frequency blocks are assigned to a user. The theoretical LTE maximum download speed of a Category 19 LTE modem is 1.6 gigabits per second, but as mentioned, actual speeds will vary due to network congestion and signal strength. Here's a quick demonstration of the 5G speed we get at our location in Sydney. The signal strength isn't great there, so we don't expect to get very high speeds. Also, network congestion will affect the speed, and this can vary throughout the day. So we go to a speed testing website, in this case speedtest.net. Then just click on go and wait for it to do its thing. And it says we're getting over 125 megabits per second for download, which is just a tad below that theoretical maximum of 1.6 gigabits per second. That's more in that low band area, which is pretty much what we're expecting here. And for upload speed, we're getting an average of over 11 megabits per second. 
I'll leave a link to this website in the description below. Let me know in the comments what sort of speed you get with your 5G connections and what city you're in. Here we compare the base model 5G router and the wireless version. Essentially they're the same, except that the 2927LAX 5G includes Wi-Fi 6, so the router will have two additional dual band wireless antennas. Its maximum wireless link rate is 574 megabits per second for the 2.4 gigahertz band and 2,402 megabits per second for the 5 gigahertz band, which is similar to the 2865LAX 5G. Here we have a comparison between the older and latest model routers. The main point to note here is that the LTE technology has improved with each later model. The earlier 2926 series was 4G Category 4 with a maximum link rate of 150 megabits per second download and 50 megabits per second upload. This improved with the 2927 LTE which had Category 6 4G technology with improved performance. Its maximum link rate is 300 megabits per second download and 50 megabits per second upload. Now the 5G router has Category 19 4G 5G technology with greatly improved performance. Its maximum link rate is 1600 megabits per second download and 200 megabits per second upload. In real world scenarios, due to various factors such as signal strength and network congestion, you may not see these speeds, but you will see much greater speeds when compared to the 4G routers. Finally, here we have a comparison of some of the other features between the older and newer router models. Essentially, the feature set is very similar, with the main difference being the Wi-Fi speeds, which is higher in the later model routers. Thank you for watching. Please like or leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. For more information about Draytech products, please check out our website at www.draytech.com.au or send us an email to sales at draytech.com.au or give us a call on 02983888899.